Let's analyze how attackers search for modems and scan your systems using a tool called THC Scan. Do you remember the movie War Games? It came out in 1983. In that movie, Matthew Broderick tries to find a way into a target network, Protovision, so that he can play their computer games. He accidentally launches a nuclear war while doing that. But he uses a technique that we can learn a lot from. He uses war dialing. Now you may say to yourself, why are we discussing war dialing now? It's a new millennium. That technique was used in a movie many, many years ago. Well, the reason we're discussing it is because oftentimes unsecured modems are the easiest way into a target network. Even today, if you needed me to get into a target network, one of the first things I'm going to do is reach for my trusty war dialer and try to get into the system. Attackers will gather information so that they know what to dial, looking for your modems. They'll use information from their Whois database lookups. They'll search your website to find information about your telephone numbers. They'll take all this information and feed it into a war dialer tool. This tool looks for modems that aren't protected on the network. Essentially, the tool dials telephone number after telephone number, looking for the familiar modem carrier tone. And oftentimes, you'll find modems set up by users who have no idea about security or ways to defend their systems. So the attacker will use a war dialer to find open modems on the target network and then try to break into them. THC Scan is one of the most useful war dialing tools available today. THC stands for The Hacker's Choice. And THC Scan runs on a variety of platforms, including DOS and Windows systems. It was written by Van Hauser, and you can download it at Pimmel.com, or you can use the version included on the CD. The attacker will use THC Scan to find all modems in the target environment. And after locating those modems, the attacker will dial up each number that includes a modem. They'll look for systems that don't require a password, or they'll use easily guessed passwords, such as root or P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, to see if they can get into the target system. Installing and configuring THC Scan is quite simple. On your Windows system, you need to create a new directory called C colon tools THC TS20. Unzip the contents of TS20.zip into that directory. Then you need to unzip the contents of TS bin and TS doc. The first one includes the program itself, and the doc includes the documents associated with it. Now that we've installed the tool, we need to configure it. To configure THC scan, you must detect your computer's modem type. From a command prompt, type what you see on the screen. Change directory into the bin directory, and then run the mod-det program. We're going to use the start command to say start in a separate window, mod detect. We're using the start command because some versions of Windows have compatibility problems. By using the start command, we can get around those compatibility problems. You may receive some warnings when you run THC scan modem detect. Just ignore those warnings. What you need to focus on is writing down on a piece of paper the COM number, the IRQ number, and the base address displayed on the screen when mode DET runs. Now that we've detected our modem and gathered the information associated with that, you need to configure the scanner to use your modem. At a command prompt, type start backslash separate ts-cfg. This is the configuration program for THC scan. Select modem config and hit the enter key. Now you use the COM number, the IRQ, and the base address information that you got from the MOD-DET program. Type that into the system and hit the escape key. You'll be prompted and select save and exit and then save and quit. At this point you've configured THC scan to use your modem. Now you can run THC scan. THC scan is run from a command prompt and you enter in a dialing mask. This tells it the range of phone numbers that it should search 
looking for modems. For example, you can tell it to search 555XXXX, and the tool will automatically substitute for the wildcard character X different digits. So THC scan will go through and dial all numbers in that exchange. By default, it does a random walk of the numbers in that range. It won't dial them sequentially, but it'll do them randomly. THC scan can automatically detect the type of line it discovers as it dials phone number after phone number after phone number. It will detect whether it found a modem carrier or whether the line was busy or whether it just reached a timeout because somebody with a voice answered the phone. Or the attacker can actually listen to the signals coming back from the modem. Rather than using the tool to automatically discover the type of line, the attacker can listen and speed things up by typing various keystrokes. If it's a carrier, a modem that was discovered, the attacker can type C. This happens a lot more quickly than it would if the attacker lets the modem do the detection. The tool displays real-time results of what it's discovered, including a list of the carriers found. That's the numbers with modems that have been discovered. It'll list the tones. These are repeat dial tones. There are certain telephone numbers that you can dial that when you dial them, they will play back to you a dial tone. That repeat dial tone can be used to dial in a new telephone number. If you find a repeat dial tone, it may be the result of a misconfigured telephone switch. That can be used to dial free telephone calls at the expense of the misconfigured telephone switch. Other things that THC Scan keeps track of are voice mailboxes, VMBs, and a variety of other types of systems are displayed in real time for the attacker. When THC scan does discover a modem and it hears the carrier, the first thing the tool does is to enter a nudge string. This nudge string is a sequence of characters that are typed into the connection to cause the system to tell us what type it is. The nudge string is configurable by the THC scan user but it's usually just a couple of enter keystrokes. Now, nudging usually causes the system to display banner information associated with the target. That is information about the company that it belongs to, perhaps even some warnings associated with the system. But ideally, for the attacker, nudging will cause the system to give a login prompt. For all the systems that it dials, THC Scan stores data about the telephone numbers dialed and systems that are found in a file that is named by the user. And the results are stored in a bunch of logs, which can be viewed using any editor. Most attackers will use Notepad or something similar to view their log files. Let's take a look at THC Scan in action. To run THC Scan, we first change into the Tools directory. Then we change into the THC Scan binary directory. In this directory, we start THC Scan using the separate command to start it in its own compatible window. We run THC scan and tell it then where to store its results. We'll store the results in a file called results. We then give it a dialing mask using the backslash M option. We're using 555XXXX. Once we run THC scan, we see it configuring itself and then bringing up our command console. From the command console, we see in the center of the screen the inventory of systems that were discovered so far. By typing the H key, we can look at the different help screens that show the various key combinations the tool can use. The help screens are numbered 7. 4 is shown, 5, 6, and 7. So for hints, we can go through these help screens. The tool is now dialing number 555-9686 and it has discovered a modem. You see on the left-hand side of the screen the found string. It has discovered a modem carrier there, and it is entering the nudge sequence to try to get information back about that system. In the middle of the screen, we see a complete inventory of all systems detected so far. At this point, we've discovered one carrier, we've discovered one repeat dial tone, and we've discovered one other line. The tool will run continuously until we stop it or until it searches all the numbers we told it to dial. An interesting number here in the middle of the screen is the number of dials per hour that the tool has scanned. Typically this ranges between 100 and 200 dials per hour. 
By hitting the Q key, we can stop the tool in the middle of a scan. If we run the tool again, it'll start up where it left off. By using the Notepad tool, we can look at the carrier log. These are all the carriers that were discovered by the system while it was running. And you can see here an inventory of numbers that it discovered on this particular date. We can also use Notepad to f analyze the busy numbers that were discovered. And as you see here, it discovered one busy telephone number. A clever attacker will redial these numbers at some later time to see if there are modems on those systems. So using Notepad, we view the logs. And compiling all this information together, an attacker can search for modems and then use them to get access into your network. Now that we've seen how an attacker uses a war dialer, let's discuss how you can defend yourself against this kind of attack. One of the most important things that you can do is to establish a clear policy prohibiting modem connections. All connections using modems in your environment should have an explicit approval before a user can set them up. And you need to make sure users are aware of this policy. I recommend having user awareness initiatives, such as uh, Information Security Day, where you tell users about the importance of information security and make sure that they understand your modem policy. For those systems that really do need modems, you should look at establishing strong authentication for all of your dial-up lines. Make sure that you don't have just plain passwords used for somebody to dial up into your network. You might want to utilize token-based authentication, where you get a little card that you give to each one of your users, and they can use that card to type in a certain number to authenticate to the system. You also may want to look at using dial-out configurations on your private branch ex exchange switch. Most PBXs have the ability to configure certain lines so they can only dial out of your network. An attacker that's doing a war dialing exercise won't be able to dial up to those lines since they're only for outgoing connections. Also, some PBXs can be configured so that digital lines cannot carry modem connections. Now, an attacker can get around this uh, if one of your users configures their system to use one of these analog to digital converters for their telephone lines. But still, some organizations do configure digital PBXs to prohibit analog calls. One of the best ways that you can defend yourself against this kind of attack is to conduct your own war dialing exercises. You can use THC Scan, which is available for free, or you can use a commercial war dialing tool. There are a variety of them on the market. And a final technique you may want to think about is conducting periodic desk-to-desk -desk checks looking for unauthorized modems in your environment. You can conduct an evening check where you go through the environment looking for modems hidden under users' desks or sometimes even in plain view. But I do advise you, if you're going to do desk-to-desk -desk checks, employ the buddy system. That is, whenever you do the checks, make sure that two people go into every office. That way, if something gets stolen from an office, your security team won't be blamed when you do your desk-to-desk -desk checks. I do encourage you to check out THC Scan and use it for war dialing your own environment to see if you can find modems before the attackers do.